Hello, I am Satan Deville. And uh, when I'm uh, on Earth here, I always tune in to the Archie Luxury Channel. Archie Luxury Channel. I always like to see what that buffoon is doing from the whist, whist, whist watch. Check. I like to see what that buffoon is doing. And when I'm on Earth, I always enjoy the Archie Luxury Channel. I'm Satan Deville. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the Archie Luxury Channel. Quick wristwatch check. What am I wearing? I'm wearing my Rolex Explorer 1. 39 mil fucker Roonies. By the way, I invented the wristwatch check. I invented the wristwatch check. Today, guys, I want to talk about an article that appeared in the Financial Review. That's the Australian Financial Review. This article has also appeared in the New York Times. Was it the New York Times? Let me just check. Yep, New York Times. In this world of uh, syndication and conglomerates, the media is, uh, they just patch articles together. But I wanted to talk about this because the Australian Financial Review, Fairfax Publication, has always been pretty damn respected. And this article is absolute fucking hogwash. It says, Watches are the new Bitcoin. Some millennial investors are treating vintage wristwear as a new asset class. It goes on to say, uh, Tattooed rockers, tech boss, Instagram influencers, uh, pile into the Tweety Tweety world of collecting watch collecting prices for sought after classics from brands like Rolex and Mega Patek Philippe are shooting up. In some cases, they have doubled in just a couple of years. The next generation um, see timepieces not just as a subtle way to dress up a t shirt and jeans, but a new asset in investment portfolios. A new asset in their investment portfolios. In the market with stocks and bonds, it goes yada, yada, yada. Time, Alecky monitored, will tell. Uh, he goes on, he quotes some fuckwits there who, who talk about double digit. Has doubled, uh, his investment in watches has doubled in the last 18 months. Yada, yada, yada. It goes on, it quotes the, uh, the Paul Newman Rolex, uh, the Amiga Speedmasters, and some Submariners. You see them rising and you jump on. Yeah, yeah. Buying a good vintage Rolex is like... Now, the fucking thing is here, let's just back the truck up. Back the truck up! Is it true? Yes, no, the article is not false. However... What about the other brands? What happens if you would have bought Brightly? What about that golden child, the early noughties? Uh, if you would have bought Pam! Pam! Panerai! Panerai is fucking dog shit! Fucking investment dog shit! Panerai is fucking Dog shit. It's toxic waste. Brightling. Toxic fucking waste. Brands like Frank Muller. Brands like IWC. What about that fucking toxic sludge? And this is the whole thing. This article here, <coughs> it tends to concentrate on Rolex. Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. And it says how wonderful the New York Times, typical fucking left-wing pinko commos that they are, it says watches are yet another easy way rich people make their money into more money. What fucking hogwash. Have you seen the value of a Patek Philippe 3919? Or even, you know, the humble Calatrava, the modern sized ones, they're not exactly soaring. Yes, the Nautilus and the Aquanaut have gone crazy. But that's because 
non patek customers are buying them. These are hip fuckers. Hippo fuckers. Hip fuckers. So, i got to be honest with you, this article is completely skewed. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit because I can tell you now... I'm the fucking watch guru. I'm the YouTube watch guru, the greatest wrist watch guru there is. And I got to tell you, a lot of this is fucking hogwash because you want to quote Rolex. Hey, what about Datejust? What about Datejust? And, 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 I, and I mean, you want to quote Rolex, Submariners? Why don't we talk two-tone? Or better still, why don't we talk solid gold? Because i got to be honest with you, solid gold, I bought an investment piece, a 16618. <coughs> I sold it a couple years ago for low 20s. I then, that collector I sold it to, he needed to get out for personal reasons. And basically low 20s, it didn't soar anywhere. And that is a really top investment grade piece. Um, I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. I think this is a load of fucking hogwash because, because these watches here, these whist, whist, whist watches, they've just skewed it to a couple of models. And I mean, let's be honest there. Late 90s, I was a tech entrepreneur, I had my own computer business, I had a collection of four Rolexes. Let's have a look at that, okay? So I had a day date, an 18238 with factory dial. I paid about 13. I sold it actually for 13 and a half thousand. So that was market value. What's it worth now? Aussie dollars. <coughs> oh, that watch now probably, you know, an 18238 with factory dial. Maybe 18, not much of a return. I also had a day just 16013. Sold that for about four. What's it worth? No more five or six Aussie, five or six Aussie for a two-tone 16013 plastic glass. <coughs> uh, the Submarina, yes, yes, I agree. The Submarina, I had a 16610, four grand. That's a 10 grand watch, okay, that's gone up. But I had it for fucking 20 years, 20 years, 20 years. And what's it done? It's basically kept place with inflation. Look at the property prices, look at the stock market for that last 20-year period. Uh, it's, it's doubled, yeah, two and a half times, yeah, okay, fair enough, Explorer 2, that's another piece, $4,000 I flicked that for in the late 90s, what's that worth now, uh, seven, it was a, it was a paper, maybe eight, 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 nine, okay, it's doubled, big fucking deal, see, to be honest with you, this article is so fucking dodgy, it's got so many holes, it's like Swiss cheese. You could drive a semi-trailer through the holes in this article. There are so many watches that if you would have bought, they'd be fucking dog turds. Fucking dog turds. They seem to leave out Panerai. Panerai, because in the late 90s, early 2000s, if you were a sophisticated sports, rock, sports watch collector, Pam, 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 Pam. They leave out Pam. What the fuck happened to Pam? Uh, that's toxic fucking sewage. And if you talk about Breitling, Breitling, what happened to Breitling? Uh, how much are those uh, super oceans worth? Or early navy, ti navy timers from the noughties? Yeah, with the Valjoux 7750 movement. How much are they worth? How much are they worth? Yeah, not fucking worth mentioning, is it? Because they have been fucking dogs. Woof, woof, fuckers. Woof, woof. Uh, then we look at some Jager Lacoutre from that period. Smallish, a little bit small in size. Uh, how about we go Paddock, Paddock, Philippe, fuckers. Ignore the Aquanaut and the Nautilus. What about we talk about, you know, the 5035, the first annual calendar? 25, they're not, they haven't really gone anywhere. The world time, the world time, which I must admit I, I own. I own a world time as an investment. <clears throat> sort of held its own in the marketplace. It hasn't. I mean, the previous model's over a million dollars. 
So, I mean, if that hasn't got investment potential, what went wrong? Well, the answer is most watch collectors are fuckwits. They're fuckwits. They're sheeple. They're sheeple. And they sicken me. And, and, and I'll give you an example. My good friend Scotty. You know Scotty. You know Scotty. He rings me and says, Oh, do I think I, he should swap his 40 mil Explorer 2, Explorer 2, that the black Explorer 2, and his 39 Explorer 1 for a Pepsi, a 90s, early noughties, no, early noughties Pepsi. I said, are you out of your fucking mind? You'd swap those two for one? Sheeple, they just follow the herd, man. They follow the fucking herd. No brains in there themselves. No individuality. Nah, 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 nah. Let's just follow what the fuckwits. These are the same fuckwits who would fuck your wife and fuck your girlfriend at the first chance. They're sneaky, dishonest, fuckwit friends. These sneaky, dishonest, fuckwit friends of yours, they would fuck your girlfriend or your wife at the first chance. These aren't friends. These are cunts. And this is the whole thing. The whole watch market is full of fucking assholes. Fucking assholes. Fucking turds. That's what they are. They're turds. So when I read this article, it's completely out of fucking kilter. It's completely out of kilter. So I got to be honest with you. Um, don't fucking believe everything you read, and particularly the New York Times. You should be fucking ashamed of yourself. Go back to writing hatchet jobs on Trump, would you? You left-wing pansies! And uh, Australian Financial Review, I mean, <laughs> Australia is just a pisshole of the world. I mean, come on, guys. Did you really not put any journalistic source into this? Are you that desperate for filler? You'd run this crap? It's uh, it's a fucking disgrace. <coughs> so, i got to be honest with you. Just be aware of it. These articles are all fucking bullshit. People are morons. The average person is a fucking fool. They are a fucking fool. That's what they are. You heard it on this channel here. They're a fucking moron. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you lousy, miserable sons of bitches think of that. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckwit friends, your fuckwit friends, and don't forget to put some nasty, vicious comments down below. Fuckers! Hi guys, Paul Pluter, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III. Guys, I want to tell you this is so important. Guys, I depend on my Patreon supporters. Just this week, I used my Patreon funds to get myself a fantastic, lightweight, gimbal travel camera. And I just want to say thank you. This was made possible because of my Patreons. <coughs> the Patreons. They made this purchase possible. And it's you know, a piece of equipment like this is $600, plus I need a few memory cards. It's such an expensive business. Guys, if you haven't sponsored me on Patreon, please do so. Look in the description for this video here. It'll tell you ways you can help me. <coughs> Guys, help me stay full-time on YouTube making videos. By helping me on Patreon, you send a small amount each month to me to keep me enthused and making videos. I can buy equipment like this little gimbal camera. Guys, come on. Help me. Help me a lot. Help me. Help me very much so. Because, guys, I, wanna, I want your help. I need help to make quality content. And I got to be honest with you. If I didn't have your help, it's not going to be much good, guys. It's not going to be much good. I need your help to buy equipment and to uh, to do things. So guys, sponsor me on Patreon and I'll be here for you. That's right, I'll be here for you. Please guys, help me on 
Patreon. See you later. <laughs>